Okay, let's get to today's <laughs> Daily Dish. Now, this is new to me. Have you heard about cake barring? Never heard of it. Well, okay, you're gonna, I'm going to tell you more than you want to know about <laughs> it right me. this minute. Yeah. Back in 2012, a woman named Audrey Shulman baked a cake and took it to a bar to celebrate a friend's birthday. Cool. It got so much attention and made Audrey and her pals uh, lots of new friends, so she realized it was a great way for a single gal to meet guys. She set off to bake a new cake every weekend, bring it to a different bar to find <laughs> really? love. It's the subject of a brand new movie called Sitting in Bars with Cake on Netflix. <laughs> so good for her. Now, she didn't meet a boyfriend or anything, but she made lots of friends uh, doing this. So now she's, a, and now she's a, a Netflix. Oh, really? Yes. Good for her, though. Seriously, something as simple as that. And, you and know, just trying something different. Try something different. Yeah, sometimes I try the different things. It doesn't always work. <laughs> but I don't bake cakes. But you, you know. never know till you try. Yeah, I guess that's true. But I, I think it's really kind of cool. I don't need to worry about meeting people. I meet a lot of people. I don't have that problem. But, you know, at the same time, it's like, I mean, if cake will do it, whatever. Make some cake. You know? I mean, seriously, I think for a lot of folks, I mean, food is a great uniter. You well, know? Like what do we talk about, Ron? <laughs> what do we talk about in here 24 7? Uh, food. I mean, food. everybody's got to eat. And it's like, it's one of those things, let's eat something well. Let's eat well. Something that's good, yeah. Yes. So, and, and, I, cake is not good for you, but it tastes very, very good. Well, we do, we do well around here. Yeah, we we, surely yeah, do. Yeah, we're not hurting. There's no doubt. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is really interesting. You can now rent an entire baseball stadium for, on, on Airbnb. Whoa. I know. Really? The Pensacola Blue Wahoos, <laughs> it's a minor league right. affiliate Love of the that Marlins. Name. They're offering up the entire park now, okay. right? Uh, for fans to spend the night, they're charging a little more than $5,000 a whoa, night, but whoa. it's got queen beds, bunk beds, unlimited ballpark access, includes the batting cage, on-field practice, clubhouse, TVs, ping pong, meal menus. I, okay. No, I think, it's, I think that's absolutely excellent idea. And the reason why I think that is because there are going to be a lot of guys, and maybe a lot of girls too, but I guarantee a lot of my friends would love to do this and probably play wiffle ball you know, oh, out there, out there on the, on the sure, field, sure. and it's like, to me, that's like, that's ingenious because for half the year, it's just sitting there because they're not playing baseball games when it's not summer. Pensacola's warm enough that you can still, even after the baseball season's right. over, and even before baseball season starts, uh, you've got a lot of prime days where you can go there. I mean, you got access to the clubhouse. Well, How if cool you could get a lot of people to pitch in, it's well, not yeah, so exactly. prohibitive. I mean, 5000 that's a lot of money, but if it's like you could make it like this, like this would be like a destination weekend uh, for a lot of guys who love baseball or just a lot of guys who just like sports for Are you a top bunk or a bottom bunk guy? <laughs> <laughs> That's I like, I like to the top bunk. Unless I'm in a train. I was on Amtrak and my son took the bottom bunk. I took the top bunk. Seriously, the ceiling was like right there. <laughs> no head space. No <laughs> head space. There wasn't much headroom. You get up, boom, you're hitting your head. Yeah, well, there you go. Yeah. So, you ran a stadium. <laughs> a global search is underway for a bass guitar that once belonged to Paul McCartney. That's cool. He bought it back in 61 from a shop in Hamburg, Germany, and the Hofner electric bass is featured in several of the Beatles' early your songs. However, Ron, it uh -huh. disappeared in 69, sometime after the band filmed to get back. Now, a group of Beatles fans have launched a lost bass project to find to find it. They believe it was stolen or lost oh, yeah. from the Abbey Road. Or, right, <laughs> I you guarantee you it was not lost at Abbey Road. Uh, that thing was stolen. Well, of course he was. And so Paul yeah. McCartney has yet to comment. But he did, rumor has it, that he did call that guitar the ancient one. Yeah, yeah, it was an old guitar, but man. He, I guess that's it. And the great thing about McCartney on bass, it's like you're going to talk about a lot of bass players and they'll say that other people are greater. But McCartney would play melodies on bass. Mm -hmm. It was really, he was an amazing bass player and a lot of his melodies were done on that Hoffner right old, there. So. Good old Hoffner right there. It's very distinctive. It almost looks like a big violin. It does, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah.